France Afrique is a term coined to describe the intricate and often controversial relationship between France and its former African colonies. Stemming from the colonial era, it encompasses political, economic, and military ties that persist today. Critics argue that it perpetuates neocolonialism, enabling French influence over African nations' policies and resources. This arrangement has faced criticism due to allegations of exploitation, propping up autocratic regimes, and inhibiting genuine post-colonial development. Proponents contend it promotes stability and economic collaboration. However, today, in the year 2023, the truth behind this wicked and cunning pact that France forced its colonies to sign is being brought to light. You are about to listen to some of the most shocking and wicked ways that France put in place in order to continue its colonization agenda in Africa. Listen to Dr. Erikana Chihombori Kwao, the former African Union ambassador to the U.S., reveal the horrible secrets behind France Afrique. As if it wasn't bad enough that we were divided up into the tiny little countries that we are today, the gift that Berlin Conference gave us. One other thing that France did between 1958 and 1961 in the name of giving us our independence as African countries, France forced the Francophone, and I hate that terminology, there is no such thing as Francophone, Anglophone, they made it up. But for the purposes of communication, I will use that. 14 of those countries, they said, in order for you to get your independence from us, you must sign this document. You thought they could have found a better name for the document. The document was called the Pact for the Continuation. I repeat, the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. We are talking about giving you independence, but sign this pact for the continuation of colonization in a different format. And I'm going to highlight some of those issues that they said you must agree to if you are going to be independent. Hello. Maybe we need to redefine the meaning of independence for the French. First, France said, you see, you monkeys, you don't know how to manage your money. We're going to demand that you deposit 85% of your bank reserves with the French Minister of Finance, under, rather, under the French Central Bank, under the control of the French Minister of Finance. France is then going to take your 85% bank deposits from each and every one of you. Deposit those funds in the French stock market under the French name. And you may or may not know the returns. Today, as we speak, the latest figures are saying for every 14 billion that France invests in the stock market from Africa, they are, they are realizing upwards of 300 billion in return. Every year, year in, year out, because of these deposits from the African countries, France is taking out of Africa over $500 billion. Now figure it out. For every 14 billion, the returns on the investment are over 300 billion, and they are taking over 500 billion. So in actuality, France is taking out of Africa trillions of dollars year in and year out from us poor people, Africans. Back to the pact. So should you want to access some of your money that you have deposited with France, you have to submit your country's financial returns. And if approved, you get to get it as a loan. You can only access up to 20% of your money year in, year out. As a loan at commercial interest rates. Your own money. As if that was not enough. 
They said, all your minerals discovered, yet to be discovered. All your oil discovered, yet to be discovered. France and French companies have the first right of refusal. If there's anything left over that the French companies do not want, your people might have. To this day. They said, you will only use the currency that we created for you because you're special Africans. We call it the SEFA. There was the Central African SEFA and the Western African SEFA, same animal. And that France is the only one that can print it for you. 1958, fast forward, they're still printing it for us. And if you start misbehaving, they just stop printing your money. And your country's in trouble. <laughs> they also said your language of instruction shall be French, whether you like it or not. That France will have military presence in your country that your military can only be trained by France, that you can only buy military equipment from France, that you cannot have any military alliance with your neighbor, and that in the event of war, your allegiance is only to France. <laughs> and furthermore, because they have military presence in your country, they can invade you without notice should they feel that the interests of France in your country are being violated. Jesus, Jesus. Fast forward, 2019, nothing has changed. The same people who have the audacity to tell us that we are poor countries. <laughs> they are taking trillions out of Africa every year. And what is the African doing? Like an obedient, programmed black man. We just give in. We know the facts. But we just do nothing about it. Now, you have to say some of the fears are real because in France that has sold you inferior equipment to theirs, France that has trained your military to be inferior to their, to their military, they are now in your country. They can invade you. They have the permission to do so. They can destabilize you. The enduring effects of France Afrique on African nations are multifaceted. Economically, dependency on the French franc's successor, the CFA franc, has limited monetary autonomy, affecting fiscal policies. Politically, close ties between French leaders and African elites have sometimes supported authoritarian regimes impeding democratic progress. Resource extraction continues to favor French interests, hindering local economic diversification. Military interventions have shaped conflict dynamics. While some argue France Afrique brings stability, others view it as neo-colonial manipulation, hampering genuine self-determination. Overall, these long-lasting effects underscore the complexities of post-colonial relationships, sparking debates on sovereignty, development, and power imbalances. To sever ties with France Afrique, African nations should prioritize economic and political autonomy. Establishing their own currencies, independent of the CFA franc, can enhance monetary control, diversifying economies away from resource dependence and fostering regional trade agreements would foster self-reliance. Strengthening democratic institutions, promoting human rights, and embracing transparent governance can reduce reliance on external support. Cultivating partnerships with a variety of global players can balance influence. Developing robust military capacities for defense and conflict resolution would diminish reliance on French military intervention. Gradual disengagement while fostering local empowerment can help African nations reclaim their sovereignty and forge equitable relationships.